Hi, it's Eric with Friends of the River here on another Wednesday with our Ask Ashley. Friends of the River is your friendly neighborhood uh, watershed nonprofit in the Sacramento region, protecting both the American River as well as rivers statewide. We're always advocating for healthy rivers, accessible rivers, and clean water, all of those good things. Um, and of course, I am joined by Ashley Overhouse, our Resilient Rivers Director, here to chat with us about wild and scenic rivers. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Eric. Thanks for having me. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashley Overhouse, Resilient Rivers Director at Friends of the River, and I'm really happy to be here today to chat about California's wild and scenic rivers and their importance in helping our state respond to the climate crisis. So I'm imagining that most of our listeners slash viewers have probably at least heard the words wild and scenic before. Uh, but what, is that, uh, what does that designation mean officially? Yes, so uh, hopefully everyone has heard the terms wild and scenic, but in 1972, California actually passed the Wild and Scenic Act, which declares, in quotations, certain rivers which possess extraordinary scenic, recreational, fishery, or wildlife values shall be preserved in their free-flowing state, together with, with their immediate environments, for the benefit and enjoyment of the people of the state, end quotations. This means essentially that with very few exceptions, um, the rivers or segments declared wild and scenic are protected from diversions, dams, and, and other kind of obstructions. And there's a there's a couple little nitpicky distinctions between like which rivers are wild and which rivers are scenic, correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. Both state and national laws classify rivers as wild or scenic or recreational. However, those terms are mostly bureaucratic. Um, having to do with pre-existing infrastructure uh, before those acts were passed, um, how accessible the rivers are, specific geography, that kind of thing. And you just mentioned the national system because California is not alone in having this. What are the differences between the national wild and scenic and the state wild and scenic? Well, overall, the differences are pretty wonky. Um, so rather than going into the nitty gritty, basically the main differences have to do with things like how wild and scenic status is granted, what agencies manage the rivers, um, the width of the protected river corridor, for instance. Um, in practice, the protections are essentially the same to those lands and waters, but the main difference is that the National Wild and Scenic Act requires consistent management by federal authorities. So while though the state is primarily responsible for their wild and scenic rivers, for example, California doesn't even have a wild and scenic program, so there's, there's no authorization by an agency to take care of those or manage those rivers. Um, and but we'll talk about that more later. And and the two the two laws don't cover all of the same rivers as well, correct? Right. So um, while many of the original rivers covered by the state program are also protected by the national program, many more of the recent additions in California have not been added to the federal system. And similarly, not ash not all nationally protected rivers are in the state system. And so uh, what, what is the impact of this when, when a river is granted this status, what, what then happens? What's the impact? Well, um, you know, aside from the official classification, um, it usually means that that wild and scenic status prevents future irresponsible development and diversions of rivers, basically ensuring the river remains free flowing um, in where that status protects it. Um, and it's considered the highest form of research co resource conservation, um, according to the Newsom administration. And it essentially results in strong protections for many endangered species, critical riparian areas and wetlands as well. Friends of the River has been a part of every single wild and scenic campaign in California since our founding in 1973. And uh, so with that little feather in our cap, um, why are these rivers important? Uh, we're always talking about climate resilience here and rivers, rivers role in that. Uh, remind us of some of these, the reasons for that. Sure. So uh, we've said this many times before, but it's really important here, especially healthy and free flowing rivers are critical to a climate resilient future. They literally build resilience into landscapes by connecting <laughs> high mountains to floodplains, right? Allowing sediment, minerals, water, organic and inorganic materials to move and collect to new locations. Um, they allow plants and animals to move up and down the channels to different um, landscapes as well. Um, they create diverse physical environments, pools, marshes, beaches, wetlands, like we just mentioned, um, and ri rivers absorb flood water and recharge groundwater at the same time. And so with every river, there's a unique landscape and with that high value for resilience for the future. 
It's it's not just the beauty. There's actual practical value to all of this as well. Um, so some of the examples of the wild and scenic rivers uh, here in California, at least, are like the Tuolumne, which starts in the Yosemite National Park, the Eel River, uh, the Merced River. Another one that uh, is particularly special to me in Ashley is the South Yuba River, pictured there in the bottom right. That is the Bridgeport uh, Park. And both Ashley and I used to work for the South Yuba River Citizens League, which was the friendly neighborhood nonprofit for the South Yuba. Um, yes. Yeah, more affectionately known as Circle to, to those that are familiar. Um, Circle, FOR, and many others helped um, uh, help designate over 30 miles of the South Yuba to be protected under the State Wild and Scenic Act in 1999. The river cascades over, you know, many granite boulders, but then kind of flattens here under Bridgeport, as you can see. Um, the Yuba is especially important because it has native fish species such as, you know, Chinook, um, rainbow trout, pike minnow, um, and the Bridgeport Bridge here um, that we refer to is uh, a national historic landmark as well. So uh, even with the these laws that are um, not in theory, they are protecting these rivers, like it's never always a guarantee. Um, we have to like, sometimes we have to fight to make sure it stays that way, right? Yes, unfortunately, um, that's one of the many reasons why FOR is dedicated to protecting rivers as well as restoring them. Um, you really, you really have to respond to threats as they come. And a good example of one um, is the proposed uh, raise of Shasta Dam. So while the threat of that particular project has been around for decades in various different forms, under the Trump administration, the project gained new traction, both financially and legally, um, which um, basically in response forced FOR's hand alongside the state of California, actually in 2019, FOR filed a lawsuit against Westland's Water District for unlawfully aiding efforts to raise Shasta Dam, which would flood critical parts of McLeod River protected in 1989 um, under the State Wild and Scenic Act. The McLeod is located upstream of the existing dam right now, and any raising of the reservoir would harm um, trout fisheries, tribal lands, rare plants mm -hmm. and wildlife, as well as endangered salmon downstream of the dam. And um, our coalition was represented in court by Earth Justice. We urged the court to find the water agency in violation of the State Wild and Scenic Act. And even though in a settlement, um, we settled out a court, Westland supposedly agreed to comply with the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act, they continued to move forward throughout 2020 um, with the project um, under the previous federal administration. But fortunately, under the new federal administration, thankfully, there hasn't been much progress in the recent two years. Correct. So thankfully, there has been no signal from the Biden administration so far that they will allocate any further funding to the Shasta Dam raise or issue a final environmental impact statement. In the summer of 2021, FOR issued a petition to the new Secretary of Interior um, asking her to stop the harmful project once and for all and recognize the authority of the State Wild and Scenic Act. We did not get official response, but it does not mean that those efforts will um, not be fruitful in the future and we will continue to uh, have a watchful eye. Um, on the McLeod River moving forward. And so uh, what what are we hoping to see from this, this set of laws going forward? Wild and scenic rivers are now more important than ever due to the climate crisis. As we've said many times already, climate change is water change. Additionally, both scientists and the Newsom administration have formally acknowledged the important role natural landscapes play in mitigating the impacts of climate change from carbon sequestration to wildlife preservation to flood safety. Increasing the amount of natural working lands is the best way to achieve a resilient California. And the heart of those resilient lands are our free flowing wild and scenic rivers. <laughs> We've talked about California's 30 by 30 initiative before on this channel. Essentially, in order to implement the community driven initiative to protect 30% of California's land and waters by 2030, California should strengthen and expand their state wild and scenic program. It's the highest form of conservation. It protects the heart of healthy and resilient landscapes. And it's already an existing legal tool that California has at its disposal, in addition to a strong federal partnership. Um, so I think that, that that will really help California jumpstart that initiative. And, and what kind of prospects are there for actually uh, achieving this, this goal? Well, um, breaking news actually yesterday. Uh, so um, April 26, 2022, 
the Newsom administration finalized their 30 by 30 strategy document, one the FOR submitted comments to a couple months ago and we talked about on this channel. So we were really excited to see those results. And one of the key places they highlighted um, in their new document and on the new website, for those interested, it's powerinnature.org, um, is the Eel River Canyon, one of the most famous wild and scenic rivers, both federally and state. Um, and additionally, in an attached document to the report, they list actions that can be taken immediately to help jumpstart the 30 by 30 initiative. So we are thrilled to announce that the state has adopted our suggestion of expanding wild and scenic rivers. And the administration listed it as a goal for those interested it's action 4.1 so uh, basically the administration is stating that they also want to designate more rivers as wild and scenic yes so the actual quote um and i think it's important to read out loud because i'm not sure who else will um, <laughs> is monitor state and federal legislation to support where appropriate enhanced conservation on public lands, including new designations and expansions of wilderness areas, wild and scenic rivers, and national monuments. Nice, so that's obviously encouraging and exciting, and uh, but also we, we will keep people updated because uh, we will certainly be on the forefront of pushing to add more rivers to these systems, and we will let everyone know when that happens. So. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, for those interested in hearing more about FOR's um, new Climate Resilient Water Program, you can hear more about it at our California River Awards on May 11th. Tune in to hear more about why these efforts to improve the wild and scenic system are part of our response to the climate crisis and part of the Climate Resilient Water Program that we're excited to launch. Um, and I think that, you know, really, truly, this is an exciting time for our state and for our rivers, despite current circumstances and a historic drought. If we take action now, we can make sure that we have healthy, free-flowing rivers for future generations. Well, uh, thank you. That was our, our Wild and Scenic 101, the, the basics and why these rivers are important. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our little chat today. Uh, we've got our uh, FOR's contact information up on the screen. Uh, we can be found on various social media channels at Friends of the River, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can find us on Twitter at, at Cal Rivers, C-A-L Rivers. And our website is, of course, friendsoftheriver.org. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube so you keep getting these. Uh, we've also started just releasing a podcast. Uh, we have one episode out. It was an Earth Day special, but keep an eye out for those too. Um, any closing words, Ashley? Uh, thank you so much for tuning in once again. Please make sure to subscribe for future Ask Ashley videos. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, folks. Have a great day.